Well, hey there, everybody. Today I'm going to teach you how to make these easy print and cut puppy dog valentines. The supplies you're going to need for this project is some cardstock. I recommend 65 to 80 pound. You'll need a printer. You'll need a Cricut machine, or you can cut with a pair of scissors. You'll need some sort of candy like lollipops. I'm also using a hole punch, and then you'll need some tape and, of course, a Cricut mat if you're cutting your paper out on your Cricut machine. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do a print and cut project with your Cricut machine. And this concept of print and cut can be applied to many different things. Um, so you can follow the same process even if you're trying your hand at some other, you know, size card or sticker or something like that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to import our designs. So these little doggy designs you're seeing here are available below. They are a design of mine and you can access that information below. I have lots of other Valentine's printables as well that you can do, um, or that you can import here into Design Space to have your Cricut cut out for you. So I'm just gonna walk you through the upload process of that. You'll just click the upload button here on your left-hand side, and then you'll want to browse your computer. And because we're working with print and cut, we want to use a PNG image format. You could also use a JPEG format. Um, however, I do recommend doing PNG when you have that accessible to you because it is a higher quality format. So that's what you'll want to use. Now, if you only have an SVG file, you can upload the SVG and then you can use the flatten tool in Design Space in order to um, flatten the design and turn it into a print and cut. So let me upload mine here. Okay, so I'm going to double click on my design here, and then we'll be presented with this screen. And just using this as an example, I've brought this in. I always select complex so that I don't, use, don't lose any details on my design, and then click continue. There's nothing we need to do here because this file is ready to go, but if you needed to erase a background or something, you would do that at this point. Um, if you're doing this manually, I like to use the select tool, and you can click, and it will erase um, parts of the back or you can try out the automatic background remover um, if you are a access subscriber. So if you need to just like remove some white background or something like that, then this is that point where you would do that. Once you've finished that, you click apply and continue. <clears throat> we want this to be a print and cut, not a cut image, because if it was a cut image, it would just be a square. We want all of those printed details in the middle there. So go ahead and click on that and hit upload. It'll appear under recently uploaded images and you'll click on that and click on add to canvas in the bottom corner. Okay, so our file has been imported here and it came in larger than what I wanted it to be scaled at. So you'll just want to think about adjusting your sizes here and also be mindful that print and cut projects can only be so large. So if you happen to have a file that comes in even larger and you see a little exclamation point over here like this, if you click on that, it'll say it's not supported by your machine. And that doesn't mean your machine can't print and cut because we have a Maker 3 in our case selected here. You could also do Explore Models or the original Maker but this is the size that it is limited to. So this exceeds the size. You can see it's eight by nine here. So you just need to make sure you reduce it to a size that will fit. And then you'll see that little exclamation point go away. So I've already scaled these to the size that I want. It's really up to you, but I'm making these um, three by four roughly, and that's a good size for a Valentine. So since I already have this one scaled, I'm just gonna um, delete that off of my canvas there. And then we can click on our make it button and it's going to divide them up onto pages here. And you'll see a black registration box around each one of these. And that's Cricut's way of marking the page so that it knows how to cut things precisely and it doesn't cut you know, through your image or anything like that. Uh, once you have reached this screen, go ahead and hit continue. There's really nothing you need to do there unless you would like to increase your project copies. Um, and then we can go ahead and click continue. It's going to connect to our Cricut machine at this point. So you're going to want to send it to your printer next here. And what we want to do is click the Send to Printer button, and a new box is going to open up. As long as your printer is either plugged into your computer or detected via Wi-Fi, if you have that set up, then you will see it appear here momentarily underneath the uh, Print Setup box. Now, I strongly recommend using your system dialog box. And what that basically is, is the ability to customize settings further after hitting the print button. And this is custom to your specific printer. So I'm using this Canon crafting printer series here, but I'm going to go ahead and click on that toggle to use my system dialog. And then I'll click on print. And it's not going to print right away. Instead, it's going to bring up a dialog box here for my particular printer settings. And since I am printing on cardstock, I'm going to click on preferences. 
and I'm just going to toggle over to where I can select that I am using cardstock. That way I can load this into the rear tray of my printer and I can ensure that it's not going to jam my printer or anything like that. So the ability to click on that system dialog will allow you to customize the paper thickness or anything like that that you might need to customize. And then we can go ahead and hit print. All right, so my printer is now printing out our design here. You can see that black registration box is going around it. That's how our Cricut is gonna to know to cut these out precisely as we want them to. Let's go ahead and put these onto our mat and have our machine cut them out. So I'm placing my design right at the top corner here. I'm using the light grip blue mat, but you could also use a standard grip mat as well. I've used both for paper craft projects. And I'm gonna go ahead and load my machine. At this point, my machine is flashing and telling me to load and I have selected a corresponding material. I am choosing a medium weight cardstock for this because that is what I printed on. If you chose a lighter weight cardstock or a heavier weight cardstock, you'll wanna select that corresponding material in Cricut Design Space. Once you hit that flashing go button, your Cricut is gonna take a couple of moments to scan that black registration box that's going around your design, and it's just reading the design for you here. If you have any trouble with your machine reading this, just double check that you have a well-lit area. Cricut needs to be able to see what it's trying to read. And also make sure that you didn't accidentally smear any of your ink because those can be factors as to whether or not your Cricut will be able to read these black registration marks and successfully cut out your design here. Once it's done reading this, it's going to go ahead and proceed with the cut. All right, so my cut is done now and I'm going to unload by clicking that double arrow button to unload the mat. And then you want to flip your mat over here and peel the mat away from the material. Now my mat's not very sticky, so it came off rather quickly. But if you have a fresh new sticky mat, then you're definitely going to want to make sure you're a little bit slower about it. I'm going to add some lollipops to mine here and I'm just using a single hole punch and I'm finding a convenient spot here on the design and I'm just punching a hole and I'm going to stick the lollipop right through that and then secure it with some tape to the back. Now if you want you could use the shapes tool in design space and you could place a little circle right over the spot that you would like it to go if you decide to go this route in place of using the hole punch. You'll just need to use the slice tool to slice the circle out so that your machine actually cuts um, the circle out. And I have some separate tutorials on using the slice tool, which I will link below in the video description for you. But in general, you could just stick these to the back or you could just use a hole punch. I just like to thread mine through and then add a piece of tape to the back. And now we have some really cute Valentines that our Cricut machine was able to cut out for us. And that's how easy it is to make print and cut valentines with your Cricut machine. And if you want these templates as well as many other printable valentines, make sure you follow the link below in the video description. I'll see you there.